Hello, welcome to Life Sport 2020. My name is Sarah Dotson, or Mrs. Dotson, if you go to Wrinkle Primary School. I'm the art teacher there. And today I'm gonna to be giving you an art lesson. We are going to be making molds. As you can see, um, I have three hanging around me. I hope you all have been doing well and you've had a good summer. I hope you've been enjoying life sport. I know there's been lots of fun and interesting things. So today I'm gonna to walk you through making one of these molds, not all three. And we're gonna do the weather mobile. But um, as I'm going, I'm gonna be talking about lots of other different art things that you can be doing. And then at the end, I'll tell you a little bit more about these other two so you can know how to make, um, make any changes that you need to make. Okay, each one is set up at three different levels of difficulty. Um, this one I think is probably the easiest and that's the one I'll be walking you through today, the weather mobile. So if you're real little, um, this is probably the one you probably want to do. Um, this one is actually the hardest. This is origami butterflies. And this one is kind of in between and this I'm calling my quarantine hands. And we'll talk about that um, when I um, go through that a little bit. All right, well, let's get started. Um, to do this project, you're first of all going to need a twig or a little stick or um, if you are in a place where you don't have access to get a stick you can use all kinds of things you can use a, um, a hanger from your closet or some kind of little pole um, lots of lots of different things that you can find around your house that are just straight like this and that you you'll be able to hang things from and then hang uh, up when you're all done. So you want a stick, you'll need some kind of string, a scissors, something to color with. That can be either colored pencils, crayons, markers, you can use paint if you want to, and of course some paper. I have both colored paper and white paper, and I'm going to be using the white paper today, but you can, um, you know, it doesn't really matter what kind of paper you use. Okay, so I'm going to start off by um, getting my white paper in. Okay, so today we're going to be doing the weather, um, the weather mobile. So we want to start off by um, the sun. And I have this uh, Diet Coke can sitting right here. And I think this is the perfect size for my sun. So I'm going to put it right here. You can grab anything that's around in your house and trace it. So I'm going to do that real quick. Ooh, that's pretty good. Not perfect, but that's okay. And then I'm going to uh, draw the little spiky things that come out all the way around. So when I did that one, I used yellow paper. If you have yellow paper, this is a little bit easier. But if not, you can just draw it. So drawing is one way we can um, strengthen our hands and our uh, finger muscles. When you're on your computer or iPad a lot, those muscles don't get, don't get used. So um, I think it's important to work with those muscles whenever you get a chance. So I'm going to use colored pencil uh, today, but again, you can use crayon, marker, you can even paint it if you wanted to. And so I'm gonna color my son yellow. And then Before I cut it out, I will probably use as much of this paper as I can. And I will probably color pretty quickly so that you um, aren't sitting there just watching me color. So I can tell you a couple techniques I teach my kids. There's two different techniques um, I know and have used for coloring that help stay inside the lines. So there you can see my son. Um, it's not absolutely perfect, but we don't worry about that. In art, you don't have to worry about making everything perfect. Um, so I'll, I'll mention to you a couple coloring techniques that I've learned along the way that, especially when you're little and you're trying to stay inside those lines, these things help you a lot. So next I'm going to do my cloud. So a cloud is just a kind of a bunch of, um, I should do this with a marker so you can see. Um, a bunch of curves, lots of different types of lines. Uh, we talk about lines in class, but um, a curve.
curve is part of a circle. So you can see here how I, each one of those is a curve. So we do that and I want blue and I won't fill this all in, but I'm gonna do more curves inside it. And then I'm gonna kind of um, color in a swirl shape. Blue marker. I have a really pretty light blue. There it is. Colored pencil. There we go. So sometimes when you are coloring, you use the same motion with your hands as the shape of the object you're coloring. So one thing you can do is you can use your finger like a bumper when you're coloring. So when I'm going up against the edge, I put my finger on the line and then I can color up to it and that keeps um, my crayon or colored pencil from going over the line. So that's one technique you can use. And then um, I'll show you another technique. What's next? Um, a lightning bolt, I think. All right, so a lightning bolt is, it's two zigzag lines, and then you kind of want to meet them together. So it's just two zigzag lines, and they touch each other, top and bottom, and that's your lightning bolt. I want to find an orange. Ooh, here's a nice bright orange for my lightning. I know lightning's more like yellow, but my sun is yellow, and I like to have lots of different colors in my project. Um, so I'm just going to color that one just regular here. Okay, next I'm going to do my raindrops. Now my raindrops, the tear, uh, it, uh, it's called a teardrop shape. So it's um, like a circle on bottom and then the top kind of comes to a point and I it doesn't matter if the three are different because every drop of water is a little bit different I'm gonna trace it in the marker and then show you what I'm talking about all right there we go we're three raindrops okay so for this one um, I'll show you another technique here's blue um, for coloring and actually I'm going to do that one when I color the back. I'm going to color these blue and then the other technique for staying inside the lines I'll do when we color the other side. Okay so this one's done. This is actually a hard stock so it holds the shape a little bit more. Um, I guess next I'll do the rainbow real quick and then we'll cut them out. Okay, rainbows. I know you guys love rainbows. I know my students love coloring them all the time. So I'm going to start with just kind of your basic big rainbow. Let me trace that in markers so you can see it better. And then that is our grandfather clock chiming there. Heard it. All right, so there's my rainbow, and then I'm going to color inside with all the different rainbow colors. So the top of the rainbow is red. So I'm going to start with red. And I, I'm going to go along the top edge with red. All right, and then the next color is orange. I'm going to use this orange again. But before I color it in, I'm going to kind of draw a line. And this is what I like to do to help me stay inside the line. I outline things, and then when I color, I just slow down when I get close to that line. And that helps me to um, stay inside the lines when I'm coloring. And you can outline anything with whatever you're coloring with. All right, that one went fast. I like these pencils. These are good pencils. So red, orange, yellow is next. I'm going to do an outline. I can show you where I'm at so far. And yellow is next. All right, I want, but you're starting to wonder what the next color is. 
colors of the rainbow are red, orange, yellow, and green. Green is next. Here's my green. I'm gonna outline it first. Actually, that's too light. I want a dark green. That's pretty. Red, orange, yellow, green. My or older kids, you might have learned um, Roy G. Biv, especially if you are in fifth grade. I believe that that was covered in your lessons about light this last year, Roy G. Biv. Um, so that's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. And uh, it's also used in art. So that's where that comes from. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue is next. Got my blue right here. I'm going to outline first. Blue. Then, violet is also known as purple. Got my purple. So that'll be my last color. And there's my rainbow. All right, so the next step is a little bit tricky depending on how old you are um, and how much practice you have had at cutting things out. So if you need an adult to um, give you a little bit of help, that is just fine. So I'm gonna cut these out. Okay, so I have these all cut out. Um, but now that they're cut out, we're not, we're only half done because on mobile, you see both sides. So I'm gonna flip these over and I'm gonna color them on their back. And this shouldn't take too long, but, and I already have my colors out. So but I'm gonna color, um, and I'm coloring on top of another piece of paper. So if I go over the edges, it just gets on that paper and that's okay. So I'm coloring my blues out first. And uh, so I want to talk a couple about a couple things real quick while I'm coloring. And that is paper is one of the best and easiest ways for you to do art. Um, I think you guys in school and even at home, that's the first thing you do or you get when you want to do art is a piece of paper because um, you can draw you can cut um, cut things out like we're doing you can um, fold uh, like, like we were talking about with the origami you can fold things and that's just with paper or you can cut and glue uh, which is a whole lot of fun I know you guys love using glue so uh, paper is one thing it's good to have some paper at home that you can uh, be creative with whenever you want. Um, I know you can, and we and we can get it anywhere. Um, the dollar store has a lot of paper. Uh, even the grocery store has some. And uh, Walgreens has a lot, and they have colored paper there too, if you want to get colored paper. Um, so it's always good to have a little bit of, of paper at home that you can just grab whenever you want and draw, color, cut, um, but just make sure you clean up when you're done. Okay, so I colored the lightning bolt. Now I'm going to color the back of my water droplets. Um, I also want to talk just a minute about drawing in general right now, or art. Um, this has all been kind of a hard season for all of us. Um, I know it's been very hard for our family. Um, quarantine, the pandemic, and um, just all the changes, and um, the, little, the loneliness of being home, stuck at home, and not being able to, to be out with your friends. And um, art is something that helps you with your feelings. And I don't know if you knew that or not, but um, one of the things I like to encourage students to do is to draw your feelings and drawing your feelings can um, look any way you want it to and it could be anything you want it to there's no right or wrong um, that's one of the cool things about art there's no right or wrong and um, you know if you're having a sad day draw some sad pictures 
And what happens is that you actually kind of might feel better after you get it out. And um, so that's really good. Oh, and, or if you're having a happy day and there's something really awesome about what's um, happening with your family, maybe you just want to remember that. I know we've been having lots of movie nights and I've seen my kids uh, draw or build with Legos um, our movie nights or um, just the fun things that we've been doing uh, since we've been home as a family. So I know you might not think of Legos as um, a form of art, but I truly believe it is. Um, you can build and use your imagination and anything where you're um, using your hands and your imagination and you're being creative is a form of art. So I uh, want you guys just to do fun, creative things. All right there's my son. I have two different shades of yellow. That's okay. All right, last but not least is my rainbow, and we're going to start with Roy G. Biv, which starts with red. So red. All right, so the next step we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting holes in all of these. Now, I have a hole punch, but I know you might not have a hole punch at your house. So what you can do is fold the paper just a little bit and um, use the scissors or you can use a needle, or if you use anything that's sharp, like a needle or a knife or um, a blade of any sort, make sure you get your parents and get their help with that. Um, all right, so I'm putting one hole in my rainbow, one in my, where's the top there, looks good, sun, one in my Latin. I'm not going to put a hole punch in my water droplets for the rain, and I'll show you why in just a second. Okay, now we're going to um, put string on them. I have this little string. I have some string that's thicker. Um, one of these, the butterflies, I used thread with, um, which is really tiny, and it you know, makes them look like they're flying so you can't see the string. But it's also really hard to work with, so just find something that um, you have at home. Again, you might need an adult's help tying, tying these things. So I'm going to leave a little bit of length there because I'm going to tie that up and then I'm going to cut it. So um, while I'm doing this, I can tell you a little bit about um, some of these other ones. My quarantine hands was a, a fun project I did because um, what I did is I went around the house and I traced everybody's hand who lives here in the house. And um, then after I traced it, I asked them, what is one thing that you have enjoyed about this, um, this pandemic, this quarantine, this being stuck at home all the time? Um, and it was fun, the responses that I got from everybody. Um, most of it had to do with more time to play and more time with, with family. But I just, I want to remember the good things from this season because there has been a lot of really hard and sad things, but um, I want to make sure that I'm taking the time to, to write down and drop my string and remember the good things. Okay, so for the water droplets, I'm not going to put a hole because they're so little. I'm going to use tape. You can totally do a hole punch if you want. But what I'm doing is I'm putting one at the very bottom. If you can see here, I have three drops on one string. So I just want to show you how I did that. So I'm going to tape that down. And I can cut off extra tape if there's extra tape. And then about an inch above that, I'm going to tape down the next one. And this kind of makes it look like it's, it's dropping down. See that? Can you see that? Okay. And then here's my third droplet right here. Just going to tape that down one right there. And then we're going to start putting them 
them on our stick. Okay, so I have the stick. Now before I hang things on it, I first want to get um, a string on it because the stick itself has to balance. So I'm going to tie the string on one end. Now I have this string here, it has wax in it, so when I tie a knot, it stays. But um, if you have slippery string, you might want to put a little dab of glue there, um, or just make sure you knot it a lot so that um, it doesn't come undone. So you're you're gonna you're gonna come up from one side of the stick, and I, I make a triangle kind of. See how I'm doing that? And then it's gonna come down to this side, and that's where I want my knot for the other end. Now, once I have that, I'll know how things are going to hang from it. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to tie all these things to it. So I'm going to start with my son. Put that extra part of the string on. Lots of tying. If you're not good at tying, get an older brother or sister or your parents or whoever you're staying with. Um, I know they would love to help you to make a, a mobile. This is something that you can hang in your room and I hope that it's something that when you look at it makes you happy and um, makes you remember doing a project with someone and um, having lots of fun being creative. Alright, I got two. I'm going to show you where I'm at so far. So I'm trying to do them at a different length so because I, I don't want them all the same spot. So I made my rainbow up a little bit higher than my sun. Great. Next I'm going to do my lightning. I want that a little higher too. And if you need some help cutting, I know that um, there's lots of people that would love to help you. All right. There is our mobile, our weather mobile. I hope that you uh, have enjoyed that. Um, I want to talk real quickly about this other mobile that is behind me. Um, oh, in case you're wondering, this right here, that's our cat. Um, I traced her paw, and she yelled at me a little bit about it. But um, This one is the origami butterflies. And this is by far the hardest. And so what you can do is you can, I'm not going to go through how to, to fold it, uh, hold the origami, but you can Google or go to YouTube and do a search on how to do um, an origami butterfly or origami animal. It doesn't have to be butterfly; it can be any animal. Um, you might want to put "easy" in your search, so "easy origami cat" or "easy origami bird" or "butterfly," um, because origami can be really hard. And, um, and then there's videos and pictures and this, that so that show you how to do that. And so this one is, um, the stick I got has lots of different branches, and so I thought that was really fun. So if you want a little bit more of a challenge, or a little older, and um, you don't want to do the, the, the weather, you could do you could do that one. And that is um, lots of fun. To put the string on, I used a thread and needle, and went through both wings, so it looks like it's flying. So it's definitely a harder thing to do but a lot of fun. Um, origami can be hard, uh, it's challenging, but um, just keep at it and you'll figure it out or, or get someone to help you in the classroom and encourage students to help each other a lot when we're doing origami. Okay, well I think that's it. Um, I hope that you had fun and um, you learned a little bit more about different things that you can that you can be doing at home, whether it's with paper or um, building something with Legos, or even when you're outside, you can be playing in with rocks or mud or um, your playhouse and just using your imagination. I know that might not be considered art per se, but um, it's, it's important for us to not just be stuck inside and staying front of the TV all the time. It's, it's good for us to use our imagination and making things with our hands and playing with our hands. Uh, 
Um, so I hope you enjoyed this and um, I hope to be seeing you guys soon, whether it's at church or school or in the store. But I hope you're doing well and um, remember that you're special, you're unique, and you are not invisible. So thank you for uh, joining me for Life Sport 2020 Art Lesson. See you later.